I'm 350 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle, in the third largest city in Greenland. With a name that translates literally as icebergs, then you know what you're going to get here. This is Ilulisat. With a population of around 5,000 people, Ilulisat is the last major settlement as you head north along Greenland's rocky and barren west coast. It is also undoubtedly one of the world's most remarkable destinations. Later in this film, I'll be heading out amongst the icebergs and also finding out why climate change is so visible in this location. But first, some history. Ilulisat's most famous son is the polar explorer and anthropologist Knul Rasmussen. This was his childhood home, then a vicarage and now the town's museum. It recounts his various explorations of both Greenland and the Arctic coasts of North America, as well as the fascinating history of the town itself. And just outside the main building, you have the chance to experience a Greenlandic turf house. Turf houses like this were in use in Greenland well into the 20th century. And although extremely small by today's standards, especially if you think that a whole family was living inside, they did one thing very well indeed, which was to keep you warm during the long winter. As for Rasmussen though, he didn't mind the cold one bit. He once famously said, give me winter, give me dogs, and you can keep the rest. The town was established as a trading post in 1741 by the Danish merchant Jakob Severin. As Jakobshaven, or Jacobs Harbour in English, the town bore his name until Greenland achieved home rule in the 1980s, and it was renamed Ilulisit, or icebergs in Greenlandic. A short walk from the museum brings you to Ilulisat's most photographed building, the Zion Church, which at the time of its construction was the largest building in the whole of Greenland. The view from the steps of the church, well it's almost too incredible to put into words, across the icebergs of Disco Bay to the snowy peaks of Disco Island. And it's a scene that changes with every minute of every day. Throughout its history, fishing for prawns and halibut in Disco Bay has been the mainstay of the economy, and both feature very heavily on the menus of the local restaurants. These days, of course, the economy is also boosted by catering for tourists, and increasingly visiting climatologists. The 5,000 human inhabitants of the town share it with 3,000 sled dogs, who provide a howling soundtrack to everyday life here. Feeding time for the sled dogs. The town sits on the northern side of the Ilulisat Ice Fjord, a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 2004, and a location that provides clear evidence of the acceleration of the melting ice cap here in Greenland. You could spend all day here sitting on land watching the icebergs float by as long as you had the right thermal clothing on of course but at some point you're going to have to get out on a boat and truly get amongst the icebergs. Ice fueled gin with ice fueled ice. Definitely a first. Oh, it's really good. 
Casper, it's said that the ice fjord is ground zero for climate change. What changes are the people here noticing? Um, what people are noticing, especially the locals, are that the, the glacier is melting a lot quicker than what it used to do and the, the icebergs are, are way smaller than what they used to do. And that's mainly because that the, the glacier front has gone from being in the water so now it has retreated back up on shore. So therefore the icebergs that calve us from the glacier front, they are simply just way shorter, way smaller. How yeah. far has it receded in recent years? In the 1850 till 1950, they retreated, the glacier front retreated 25 kilometers. And then from the, from the 1950 till 1960, the glacier front was rather stable. But then from the, from the 1960 and up till the year 2000, then the glacier front has retreated 40 kilometers as well. And that's like, it goes very quickly and way quicker than what it should do. It's a, it's a normal procedure that the glacier will melt during the winter, during the summer, and then it will brew back during the winter. But right now the, the winters, they are not as long or not as cold as they used to be, and the summers are getting longer, longer and way hotter. How is yeah. that affecting the lives of people in Ilulisa? The locals, they can, they can fish longer, yeah. but then they have a huge culture for, for dog sledding and the season for dog sledding has become way shorter. And also, it's not as safe to go, to go on the, on the, in the disco bay along the coast. Before time, they could go dog sledding along the coast, but right now, then, it's, that's not possible because it's simply not safe. The ice will not get that thick anymore. And that's a problem for the people in the smaller hamlets in the disco bay, because then the, um, the ice is too thick for the smaller boats, but it's too, it's too thin for dog sledding. So therefore they are kind of stuck where normally they would use the dog sled or the snow scooter, but now it's not possible because the ice is not thick enough, because it will not go, get cold enough. So, and that's actually make it harder to get like everyday groceries and for the people to get back and forward and visit their families because it's not, um, it's not that simple. They have to wait for the big passenger ships that comes one time a month to break the ice. So they are, they are stuck out there in the small hamlets. So major impact, not just for the world, but yeah. for the people here. Also for the local the Inuits local that level live here. Too. Yeah, that's right. The mouth of the ice fjord is much shallower, so this is where the really large icebergs get stuck for up to two years before they either break up or get pushed out. And the captain's taking us right up to the wall. Recently there has been a new addition to the landscape. The Ice Fjord Centre was opened in 2021. With the external form of a snowy owl, it is, in my opinion, a perfect marriage of Danish style and Greenlandic tradition. It's unlike any other visitor centre that I've been to. And the highlight was a sound installation that captures the actual groans and roars of the ice cap from various locations around this vast country. And then from the centre, it's a short walk to the ice fjord itself. Although this being Greenland, the weather is of course not guaranteed to be favourable. 24 hours later and the view is radically different. Now you can see all the way across the ice fjord. And it's an utterly unbelievable sight. The front of the glacier from which all of these icebergs are being carved is now 40 kilometres away. And as Casper said, it's receding at an alarming rate. As the icebergs exit the ice fjord into Disco Bay, they are initially carried northwards by the current along the coast, before being caught by the much stronger current that will send them southwards along the coast of Labrador. And then the largest bergs here, well, you might spot them off the coast of Newfoundland in a few months' time. One of the world's most famous icebergs left this ice fjord and it sank the Titanic.
We're now leaving Ilulisat, but yesterday we took a boat trip to the Eki Glacier. Make sure to watch that next. And also, don't forget to subscribe. There are loads more films about Greenland on the channel. See you soon.